Hey guys, welcome back to this week's video. Today I'm going to show you how I created this skull planter uh, from scratch. And I just want to start off by saying if you enjoy stuff like this, 3D printing, art, painting, be sure to like and subscribe and I hope you guys enjoy this video. So since last week I've gotten a few new subscribers, so if you're new here, hello, I'm Nicole and I love to be creative, make cool things, paint, 3D print, and everything you see on this channel. When I originally started this YouTube channel, my expectations was to show you my journey in creating a jewelry design business. And although that hasn't really changed, it more so took a slight detour. This is because I'm currently living in a city that has very strong lockdown restrictions and we're currently in the third wave and nearly all small businesses are closed. This definitely impacted my ability in getting my designs casted, polished, set. So nobody really truly knows when things are going to go back to normal. So in the meantime, I'm going to be focusing on doing 3D printing DIYs such as this one, candle molds from the prints, painting the molds, and other creative things that come to mind. So since the cold, brutal winter is over, I thought it would be really cool to represent the season with a 3D printed flower pot. The skull was kind of a random pick, but I wanted to pick something really colorful and I think a plant growing out of a skull kind of represents growing your mind. I don't know, bear with me. But my direct inspiration was the Mexican skull on Google Images and Pinterest and its beautiful colors and images that are represented on the skull. A particular variation of the Mexican skull that stuck out to me was the one with the beautiful flowers and bright colors. And when doing some research, I saw that the symbol represented eternity, meaning that when we pass, we still continue to be here under new forms in nature. So I thought that was pretty cool. Overall, this skull took about 14 long, brutal hours to print with a ton of supports which were a killer to remove from the model. You'll see later on in the video how many supports were needed to hold the inside of the skull up. And if any experienced 3D printers are watching this, I was wondering how I can create supports on models that are easily removable. If there's a setting or something I can do that doesn't merge directly with the other layers. So if anyone has an answer to this or any tips, please leave it in the comments because this will really help. Despite getting a complete arm workout trying to pry off the supports, I really liked how the model turned out. The rigid look of the skull gives it a very realistic appearance, which I thought was really cool. I do wish it was a little bit bigger overall, but I thought 14 hours was the max time I was willing to wait for a print. Any longer than that, I think is just way too long in my opinion, unless it's like a multiple piece print, but for this one, I was pretty satisfied with just the 14 hours. The materials that I used to make this planter was white PLA filament, as you see on the left side. Uh, that I purchased from Amazon. I got the white because alongside the filament I also bought an airbrush that will be used to properly paint my prints. It hasn't come in the mail yet so for this particular piece I just use various sizes of paint brushes that I had from a long time ago and the other materials that I used were a black sharpie to draw the patterns and acrylic paint set and little crystals that I also bought on Amazon. This 3D model was found on Thingiverse, Thingiverse, not sure how to pronounce it, but I will link it down below. I'm not sure if the skull is 100% anatomically correct, however I would say it is pretty close. When you click the link, you can find a downloadable file of a full skull 
So what you can do is take the STL file into Blender and use the bool tool to make an indentation so we can make space for our flowers. You can then export that file, import it into the Prusa Slicer, add your supports and set it off to print. The flower that I'm going to be putting in this planter is called the Deanthus flower. It's most commonly known as a carnation and I bought it at Home Depot for $5. It is super pretty and I can't wait to see how it blossoms in the next few weeks. It does need a lot of sun so I'm going to have to find a spot outside and hopefully nobody ruins my planter but I guess we'll see. And I'm really excited to show you how it turns out in the end so keep watching. I would like to take a second to thank everyone who commented on my video last week. I got a lot of kind comments that really motivated me, but I also got a lot of comments with suggestions and tips and ways to improve my prints, which were extremely helpful and I'm very thankful for that. Some people were also saying that they recommend that I just use 90% isopropyl alcohol and it was just enough for them for their prints to stick to the bed and to be honest i did try this a few times but every time i did my prints popped off i don't know if my nozzle may be too close to the print bed or something to do with my layer height but i find that uh, my prints come out the best when i use either a glue stick or hairspray which seems to kind of be frowned upon by some 3d printers however it does work for me and i will continue to use it especially on prints like this that are 14 hours i don't want to risk them popping off and hours are wasted and filament is wasted so i rather play it safe but for smaller prints, yeah, I do find maybe just using the alcohol is enough, but again, I don't want to risk it. I'm not going to lie, but when the skull finished printing, it looked extremely realistic since it's a white bone looking color. I think it would be pretty cool to recreate the whole human skeletal system for medical students or anyone studying anatomy but then I realized there's over 200 bones that I would have to print and oh gosh that would be very difficult <laughs> and I would also have to know where the bones go myself so I can recreate it but I thought that would be a cool project so for my future plan from this week forward i want to put out a video every tuesday and thursday showing a bigger project that i made and also a time lapse video of a print that i made that week and if you guys have any suggestions of what i should print next please leave it down in the comments i do love suggestions and i'm open to anything i'm been printing everything from like action figures to as you can see the skull so please feel free to leave your comments i will literally print anything <laughs> this week i was originally supposed to show you guys how i make a candle from my 3d prints but i'm still in the process of making the mold the mold is taking a little bit longer than expected because it is a silicone base and it is taking a while to harden. By next week, I hope to show you my progress with that and if it indeed worked or failed. It's still a mystery for me, so I'm excited to share it with you guys.
Okay, so some of the materials that I used to create my skull was this set of acrylic paints. I got this on Amazon for I think about $40, but it has so many colors that it was such a good buy. Like the color choices are, are very diverse here. The only thing is I would order more white paint and more black paint because those are usually the most frequently used colors. Um, what else? They also dry super fast. Like when I was doing the skull, it would each layer would take about two, three minutes to dry and then I was able to paint another layer on top, which is super good. I definitely recommend these and I'll link them down below if um, if I can find the link. <laughs> the next thing is this white filament that I got. Um, the brand looks like it's AMZ 3D. Amazing 3D? Not quite sure. But um, I also got this on Amazon for $40. And at first I was a bit hesitant because I didn't know if it was going to be the same quality as the Prusa Mint. Uh, filament and it turned out to be pretty good. I don't have any complaints. Some people did say it clogged their um, printer but to be honest I did not experience that yet. I did print a quite a few things with this so far so I definitely recommend it. I can put the link down below if you're interested in getting it as well. So this is the final product which I'm really excited to show you guys. There is a, a lot of art on it, a lot of different colors, and I also added my touch of like the bedazzling as I always do. So let me just show you up close here. The little designs, the flower here, and the flower that I bought actually kind of matches this one. It's really pretty. Bought this for $5. <laughs> colors kind of go together which I thought would be cool so now I'm just going to show you how I put it in my little flower pot and we'll see how it goes thank you so much for watching this week's video if you like my little creation here please like subscribe comment I love to hear your comments and what you think of each video so please be sure to do that and I'll see you next week.